welcome students so as you are aware that the examination for this year that is the session 2021 and 22 for your class 9 it is going to be held up in the uh, mcq forms only okay here we have got an uh, idea that uh, your examination is going to be held up in a m so the new pattern of exam your will be in the mcq so which uh, we are going to discuss some of the mcq type questions for your chapter 2 and similarly uh, we will discuss about the chapter 1 also now let's consider uh, this particular situation and according to that let's revise some of the questions which can be useful for you in the examinations so let's start and here we are going to discuss the first question that is the question number 1 here which is asking here which of the following statements are true for the pure substances okay so out of the following statement you have to find out that which of the following statement is true for a pure substance so the first statement here is pure substances contain only one kind of particles okay the pure substances are containing only one kind of particles there next number 2 pure substances may be compound or mixtures okay they can be either compounds or they can be either mixtures pure substances have the same composition throughout okay we are saying here that pure substances can have the same composition here throughout pure substances can be exemplified by all the elements other than nickel here we can say that the pure substances can be easily exemplified by all the elements other than the nickel here so we have to see that which of the given three statements okay or uh, of the given four statements which of the statements are being <coughs> true here for the pure substances so for the pure substances out of these four statements the first statement is stating that pure substances contains only one kind of particle so yes it is true okay we know that the definition for the pure substance is that a substance which can contain only a same type of or identical type of particle okay okay any identical or same type of particles are been same type of particles are been included then it is termed as what it is termed as a pure substance the next uh, pure substance may be compounds or mixtures but here we know that mixtures cannot be a pure substance okay so hence uh, this second statement becomes incorrect because pure substance can be compounds but it cannot be mixture because in the mixture we will find that two or different types of uh, particles will be present out there in the mixture two or more types of particles can be present so hence uh, we cannot consider mixture as a pure substance the third statement is also asking here that uh, here the stating here that pure substances have the same composition throughout so okay it can be considered let's see the last one that pure substance can be exemplified by all elements other than nickel so we cannot uh, exemplify the nickel here why nickel can be exemplified because nickel is also an element and if uh, all the elements or all the particles are present for nickel only then it can be also considered as the pure uh, substance only so hence the answer will be i think so 1 and 3 so the correct answer will be your d option that is 1 and 3 okay okay so the answer here is your option number b where it is saying that the pure substance it is uh, the first statement is stating that the pure substance can contain only one type of uh, particles and the third statement which is containing that pure substance has the same composition through and the two statement that is the second statement and the fourth statement are false let's move further and see the next statement here uh, sorry next question here the question number so the question number 2 the question number 2 is asking here the rusting of an article made up of iron is called okay so what is rusting it is asking here that rusting of an article made up of iron is called what is that particular process what is rusting process it is asking here so 
the option A is stating that corrosion and it is a physical as well as chemical change. The second statement, the B option is stating that dissolution and it is a physical change. The third is stating that corrosion and it is a chemical change. The last is stating that dissolution and it is a chemical change. So first thing, here two things are uh, described. One is the corrosion and the other is the, the first one is the corrosion. Okay, the first one is the corrosion. And the second one is the dissolution. Corrosion and the dissolution. These two things are here. So, first let's discuss about the corrosion and dissolution. What is corrosion and dissolution? So, the dissolution is the process of solids dissolving in liquids. When solid substance, when solid particles gets dissolved in the liquids, then that particular process is termed as dissolution. Okay. And we know that when solution is formed, when solution is formed, then solution is generally termed as what? It is termed as mixture. Okay. And mixture can be easily separated by, can be separated by physical or any other method which includes the physical uh, type con con conditions only okay so they can be separated but we know that if iron gets rust if iron is rusted then the after the rusting process the iron which has got rusted there it will not be possible it is not possible to retain that iron metal the iron metal which is rusted there it is not possible to retain that Okay, so hence here we will say that corrosion. What is corrosion? Corrosion is nothing other than destruction of metals. Okay, it is the destruction of metals. And how metals are destructed here? They are destructed generally by chemical process. It is a chemical process or you can say that it is a irreversible process. But while in the case of dissolution, it is a reversible or physical process. Okay. So, hence, if I am considering for rusting, okay, if I am considering for rusting, then the correct answer it will be corrosion, it is a chemical change. Okay. Corrosion, the rusting is a corrosion process and corrosion is what kind of change? It is a chemical change because it is irreversible. We cannot reverse the rusting process. We cannot get back iron from the rusted uh, iron. Okay. So, hence the rusting is a corrosion and it is a chemical process. What happens in rusting? In rusting, the iron gets reacted with the oxygen in the presence of moisture of the air and it forms rust that is termed as Fe3O4 okay and and hydrogen gas is been released out there so here uh, sorry not hydrogen gas no um, uh, it will not be released out but uh, here the formation but here the formation of iron oxide will take place okay the formation of iron oxide will take place and due to this this iron oxide which has been formed out here it is nothing other than your it is the rust on okay which is generally reddish brown in color and by simple physical methods we cannot separate or we cannot retain the iron from this rust so hence the rusting is a chemical process and uh, corrosion is the uh, main uh, funda uh, the main concept which explains rusting let's move further and see the next question that is question number three so the question number three is asking here a mixture of sulfur and carbon disulfide is okay so a mixture of sulfur and carbon disulfide uh, what can be heterogeneous and shows tindal effect homogeneous and shows tindal effect heterogeneous and does not show tindal effect 
or the last option is homogeneous and does not show Tyndall effect. Okay, so carbon disulfide. We are talking about here. We are talking here about carbon disulfide. So the chemical formula for carbon disulfide is it is Ca2S, and carbon disulfide is one of the good solvent. Okay, it is one of the good solvent which is used for dissolving many of the substances. When when sulfur is dissolved in carbon disulfide, okay, it is easily dissolved in carbon disulfide. The sulfur is soluble in carbon disulfide. Then a uniform solution is been formed. Okay, a uniform solution is formed out here. And as we know that a uniform solution or a true solution, it does not show Tyndall effect because a uniform solution or a true solution has what kind of nature? It is having a nature that uh, the particles are very very small there. And the due to this reason, what will happen? We will see that the uniform solutions, okay, uniform solution, they will not showing any Tyndall effect because for showing Tyndall effect, the particles must be larger as comparison to that of the true solutions. So hence here it is concluded that the <coughs> solution, the mixture of sulfur and carbon disulfide, it will be a homogeneous mixture and it will not show the Tyndall effect. Okay, C2S which is one of the uh, good solvent here, it will easily dissolve the sulfur in it and it will form a uniform solution here. And due to this uniform solution and due to this nature here, we will see that it, they will not show any Tyndall effect. Okay, let's move further and see the next type of question, the next question here. So the question number four. The question number four is asking here that tincture of iodine has antiseptic properties. Okay. We know that the tincture of iodine has antiseptic property and tincture of iodine is nothing other than a solution. So how we are making this solution? The solution is made by dissolving iodine in potassium iodide, iodine in Vaseline, iodine in water or iodine in alcohol. Okay. So we have to find out that what is tincture of iodine, how it is been made out. So we know that tincture of iodine. iodine it is a antiseptic okay it is an antiseptic and what are antiseptics the substances which are used for anti germination okay anti uh, sorry they are termed as germicides which are used for removing out the germs from the wounds or the uh, sore which is uh, wounds you know wounds or from the sore sore okay sore so you are source which has been happened due to any accident or any other kind of damage there to your body. Okay, so this wounds or skin uh, or sores which is present, oh, sorry, not sore, it is sore, S O R E sore. S O R E sore. Okay, so in the sores and wounds, what happens? We apply this tincture of iodine. So this tincture of iodine is generally, uh, we can use iodine here, which is having antiseptic effect. But to uh, make this iodine uh, friendly, okay, user friendly, we generally make a solution of the alcohol and iodine. Okay, because alcohol is a very volatile substance. It is a very volatile liquid. What happens when alcohol comes in contact with the air, it readily converts to gaseous state and hence the iodine there will be left out alone. Okay, but while in the case of iodine uh, in potassium iodide, in the case of Vaseline and in the case of water, they are not so much volatile as comparison to that of the alcohol. While alcohol is a very, very volatile liquid, it readily converts into gases as it, is, as, it is con uh, as it comes into contact with the air. And hence, we will find that only iodine is being left out there on the wound or sore which is having the major antiseptic property. So hence, here the answer will be answer number D that the tincture of iodine is a solution of iodine in alcohol, which is used for antiseptic 
purpose that is uh, we known the iodine is known for its antiseptic nature only okay so this was the answer that is the d option for this particular question now let's move further and see the next question the question number 5 so the question number 5 is asking here which of the following are homogeneous in nature okay which of the following which are given here are homogeneous in nature so the question number 1 option number 1 is ice number 2 wood number 3 soil number 4 air okay so we have to uh, identify which of the given four are homogeneous in nature so uh, ice ice is what ice is uh, just water in its solid form wood wood is uh, a mixture i think so it is a type of mixture okay uh, of different uh, compounds next uh, soil soil is also what soil is also a mixture only and in wood and soil we will see that the particles are easily differentiable the particles are there easily differentiable but in case of ice we will see that the particles of a solid ice the particles of a solid water is not easily differentiable and the main uh, definition for the homogeneous and heterogeneous substances is that heterogeneous substance can be easily differentiated while in the case of homogeneous substance the substances the particles of the substances cannot be easily differentiable so hence in the case of air air is also a mixture but the particles of the air are not easily differentiable they are not easily differentiable there but in the case of but in the case of uh, your uh, wood and soil which is also a mixture the particles are easily differentiable there okay so the options that is 1 and 4 is left out as a uh, homogeneous or the non differentiable uh, substances and the non differentiable substances are generally termed as what they are generally termed as the homogeneous substance homogeneous substance so hence we will say that the option c that is 1 and 4 is the correct option here that ice and air is the homogeneous substance because generally we cannot easily identify the particles of this substances with our naked eyes next moving to the next question that is question number 6 so the question number 6 is asking here which of the following are physical changes okay it is asking here which of the following are physical changes so the options are number 1 melting of iron metal number 2 rusting of iron number 3 bending of an iron rod and number 4 drawing of a wire of iron metal so out of this uh, four we have to find out that which of the followings are physical changes okay so first melting of iron metal so iron metal it is solid and when we will increase the temperature there it will convert to liquid okay so here the physical process is going on iron is converting from solid to liquid the melting process of iron is nothing other than the conversion of solid into liquid which is a physical process so hence it is a physical change next rusting of iron so rusting of iron as i have discussed before also rusting of iron is a irreversible process because we cannot retain the iron from the rusted uh, iron so it is a irreversible process and it is a chemical uh, process okay it is a chemical change next is the bending of iron rod so bending of iron rod is nothing other than the changing of shape of iron rod okay it is nothing other than the changing of shape of iron rod and we know that the changing of shape of iron rod is a physical change because we can easily uh, convert 
the shape of that particular iron rod which has been bent out there to its uh, normal original form. And the last is the drawing of metal. Okay, drawing of a wire into iron uh, of a, a, a drawing a wire of iron metal. Okay, so generally drawing of wire it means that conversion of conversion of iron into wire it is a physical process only because here also we are changing the shape of iron metal we are not changing the composition of the iron metal or we are not uh, uh, conducting any irreversible process so the rusting process is only a process which is not a physical change here either the three that is the conversion of uh, or the melting of iron the bending of the iron rod and the drawing wire uh, uh, from the iron metal they all are physical changes only so the option will be one three and four and the option is correct option is c okay because all these three processes uh, which we have discussed here they all are all the three methods uh, they all are the physical change only and the rusting of iron is the only method or the process here which is a uh, irreversible process or chemical process here so for today i am concluding the class here only and i think that this six questions is been clearly uh, understandable for you after the explanations here we will uh, conduct uh, we will uh, continue this particular uh, session in the next video and there we will discuss about some more of the questions uh, which is related to your chapter 2 and they are all our mcq type only Okay, so thank you for today and we will uh, continue with the more questions in the next class. So thank you.